Hi, I'm Little Fin Swimmer, and I thought today I would share with you my top 10 favorite books. So, two of them are swim related, one of them is exercise related, two of them are more, two or three of them are more children's books, and the rest are pretty much 18 and over sort of books. So, the first is Autobiography Butterfly by Yusra Mardini. Yusra was a Syrian refugee um, who became an Olympian. She left Syria to go to Germany, and she was able to train there for the Rio 2016 Olympics, which was super cool. I think I actually watched one of her races, too, which was awesome. The next book is Fire in My Eyes by Tom Silio, Silio? I'm not entirely sure, and Brad Snyder. It's detailing Brad Snyder's journey from being blinded on the battlefield to becoming a gold medalist Paralympian. Um, I've met him a few times, or I've seen him around the pool area, and he seems like a really cool person. So I highly recommend both of those books. They are autobiographies, both of them. So if you're interested in that, I highly recommend checking them out. So the next book is a little more on the sciencey side of health and wellness. So if you're interested in that, it cites a ton of studies. It's Peak by Dr. Mark Bubbs. He actually has a podcast. Um, it's really awesome. I actually listen to it quite a bit. It's super interesting. So if you're interested in the science of peak performance, I highly recommend one, checking out the podcast and two, checking out this book. So the fourth one is The Mysterious Benedict Society. I originally read this in middle school. Um, it's a kid's book, but I continue to enjoy it even now as an adult. I bring it on long flights with me a lot. It's really easy to read, easy to digest, and it takes my mind off of flying. So it's very much an adventure, like good, good guy, bad guy trope. So if you're interested in that, I highly recommend it. It is by Trenton Lee Stewart, Mysterious Benedict Society. The next one is A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle. I think I said that right. It's actually a Newbery Medal award-winning book. It was written quite a while ago, I think. And I read it as a kid, and I actually read it again as an adult, and I ended up really enjoying it. A lot of the stuff in it is a little hard to understand maybe as like a young adult and I highly recommend it's great for younger audiences but also as an adult I read it and a lot of it clicked more with me and it had some really deep amazing messages to it so I highly recommend young or old this book is awesome. Now on to the more adult books, I guess. So one that isn't necessarily, it's more young adult, is the selection. I didn't have the first book with me, so I have the third one. Um, it's a story about, I. it's kind of strange to describe it. It's a sort of like televised dating competition, but it's set in kind of a dystopian future. It's super interesting. If you have the opportunity to pick it up and give it a read, it's very hard to describe. I read it, I think I was 13 or 14 when I first started reading the series. And it was super interesting. Um, I still enjoy it to this day. And it's well written. So the next one is Frostblood. I actually read this and another one in this pile pretty recently. I think last summer I worked a job where 
I was sitting around a lot and I didn't have a ton to do so I read a lot. I would bring books with me since I didn't want to be on my phone the whole time. So Frostblood is a story about magic, it's got romance, and it's got very well written fight scenes. So if you're interested in any of that, it's super interesting. It does have a little bit of a twist at the end. So it's Frostblood, Ellie Blake. I didn't mention, but the selection is by Kiara Cass. So the next book is one I was very surprised by. I picked it up at a store for really cheap and I didn't expect much. It is Insatiable by Meg Cabot and it's kind of like a better written, more fleshed out Twilight. So if you're interested in vampires, it's incredibly well written and I really recommend it if you enjoyed Twilight, but you're looking for something now maybe a little bit better written. Not that Twilight isn't well written, but this book has a lot more moving parts to it and there is more of an interesting conflict in my opinion. So my ninth book is Kill the Queen. It's another one that I read over work. So it's by Jennifer Estep. I think I said that right. I'm really bad with names. So Kill the Queen is a very fast paced, action packed book. I was pretty much hooked after chapter one and I read it all the way through. I've read the second book and I really want to get the third book in the series. It's awesome. It's super interesting and if you enjoy romance and magic and kind of it's an underdog story, I highly recommend this book. So yeah, my last book, I will preface, is my favorite. And it is an adult book, like 17 plus, so keep that in mind, um, is A Court of Mist and Fury. The series is called A Court of Thorns and Roses, but A Court of Mist and Fury is my favorite book. It's by Sarah J. Maas, and it's fantastic. It's beautifully crafted. I have to say, like, after reading this book, it was a, about a year before I found a book that I felt was as well written and had as well of a, like, fleshed out, fantastic writing style to it. So I feel that it basically has a great example of what a healthy relationship should look like, whereas other books you know, maybe not so much. So A Court of Mist and Fury specifically is a story of romance and healing from past trauma and the main character goes through a lot and she's very strong in her own way and it's fantastic. So if you have the chance to read it, it's great and it's just beautifully written. So yeah, those were my top 10 favorite books. So let me know if you've read any of them. Let me know which one you want to read. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. Feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.